Academia was the director of academics. And currently I am the director um, of a top, uh, at a top tier private school in the Bay Area. Um, my background is in education. I have my bachelor's in psychology. I have a multiple subject teaching credential and my master's degree is in education uh, with a specialization in educational leadership and curriculum and instruction. Um, so yeah, I'm so happy to be here amongst all of you teachers, um, my favorite people in the world. And I'll pass it over to Sister Masima. Rahim. alaikum, everyone. Um, I'm sorry, my lighting is not so great here. Usually the spot works, but I'm trying my best to work around it. So hopefully you could still see me. Um, I, I just wanted to thank you all for taking out um, the time to come to this. It's so exciting. Um, I'm so excited to meet all of you, to have this platform to get um, Shia and Muslim teachers across the nation together on one single platform to finally have conversations that we've been waiting to have for so long. Um, and so Alhamdulillah for the opportunity and um, for being here today with you and really humbled and honored. Um, just to briefly introduce myself, um, my name is Sister Masuma Hedri Kalyan. Um, I've grown up in New York, so I've done a lot of my education and teaching in uh, public schools there. I've also taught at a private school in, in Maryland. Uh, upon moving to California, um, I've taught both in the Northern Bay Area as well as Southern California. And uh, my background in teaching is, um, uh, I went to Teachers College um, at Columbia University and I did my certification um, in middle school and high school. I've taught courses in um, social studies subjects from government, economics, to also film and production as well as English. And uh, my undergrad from State University of New York, Binghamton and NYU. And I'm really honored to be here today with all of you. I can't wait to um, work with all of you and also introduce all of you to al -Qista Foundation for those of you who are not familiar. Uh, I'm also currently the networking coordinator for on behalf of al Qissa Foundation, which means basically it's an, uh, my job to try to get people to come together, to get to know each other, to understand what al Qissa is, and to also um, basically network. So um, with that said, I'll pass it over to Sister Tina. Thank you, Assalamualaikum. I, um, my name is Tina Haralambopoulos, and I am the Director of Academics at Rise Online and a newcomer to the al -Qissa group. Um, I am odd man out here in the middle of Chicago while everybody's in beautiful California. Um, I've been in education for 10 years, and um, my background is elementary education with a focus on middle school. Um, social studies and language arts, and also English as a second language. My master's, um, it was really funny, Sister Nazaro, as you were talking about your master's, I thought you were introducing me because my background is both in educational leadership and curriculum and instruction. Um, so we, mashallah, have very similar backgrounds. And um, inshallah, my goal is to pursue and complete my doctorate of education in organizational leadership. And so I'm blessed to be with you guys today, and um, think, I'm glad to be part of the team. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, mashallah, we have um, our group. It's slowly growing already. We have over 40 participants. And Sister Tina, if I can ask you to um, go ahead and project our uh, pad. Oh, actually, before we do that, <laughs> I'll ask you all to please rename yourself on Zoom so that, um, you know, we know, you know, what your name is, what grade level you're teaching. Um, and then you see we have an example here for you. So it would be Alia from Texas teaches seventh grade science. So if we can all go ahead and take a moment just to rename ourselves again, just because our group size is quite large. So um, we can't go around unfortunately and take the time to all of us, you know, like introduce ourselves, but at least this gives us an idea of who's in the room. And inshallah, when we have our breakouts, we will have that opportunity to connect because that, as we will be discussing, that is one of our big goals and, and it, which is like essentially to create a network of educators. So if you can all just please take a moment to go ahead and do that. Um, and for those of you it. who don't know how to rename, but I think everyone is familiar with 
the Zoom technology by now, but you can click on participants, click down on your name under more. Um, so click on participants, click on your name, and then if you click on your name, there should be an option for you to go ahead and rename. And I just went ahead and um, did my own as an example. So you guys can see I just renamed myself to Nazira, California. And for my grade level, I put K to 12 administration, which is what I'm currently doing. So if you are working as an administrator or principal, you can go ahead and put that um, as well. Okay, great. Now, while you're all doing that, Sister Tina, if we can um, move on to the next slide. Okay, awesome. I was just gonna drop our our network here. So I'm gonna zoom out. If you guys, um, we're having a little bit of difficulties um, getting your pin dropped in there. Um, you can just pop me your information and I can just drop your pin for you. So as we can see, we're missing the middle part of the US here, Sister Nazira. Not a surprise, Sister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, mashallah, we have some presence on the coast, um, Texas, here we go. Um, mashallah, we see people, um, we have, you know, people all across the country and I'm sure, um, for those of you who haven't gotten a chance to do this yet, go ahead and do that. Sister Tina, can you show them some of the cool features of how this networking tool works? Absolutely. Um, so, um, if you guys are having a little bit of, um, um, uh, a little bit of a discussion, I guess, with Padlet. I'll walk you through real quick. So what's really neat is that um, you can go ahead and just hit the plus sign and then type in where you are from. I cannot type this morning. Um, and then it will come up with this little screen here and then you can type in your name. And like, if you want to put your grade that you teach. And then after you have your pin dropped, you can check out who else is near you. So I'm gonna scroll into Chicago over here. And here's my pin over here. And I can see that I have two other fellow um, educators in the Chicagoland area. Um, so you can go ahead, this is probably the pin I just tried to drop. So you can kind of see like where you're at and people around you so that when we are in our breakout rooms, you guys are able to maybe meet some people in your area. So if we look here in Houston, we have two pins dropped. And so inshallah, you know, you guys will be able to put like your information so that we can see where everybody is from. All right, and then I will get our agenda up here. Awesome, and thank you so much for those of you who came prepared and have your cameras on and <laughs> We can see your beautiful faces. Um, mashallah, you know, as a, as a teacher, it makes such a huge difference when you can make that connection with, um, you know, everyone who's around you. So thank you for those of you who have already done that. And if you haven't done that, I would highly encourage you to please go ahead and do so. Um, I promise that you will gain more from it that way. And um, others will gain more from you that way. And no one's going to judge. I know we, we all are, you know, we're a year into this pandemic almost. So we're all used to you know, the messy backgrounds and the scraggly hijabs. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sister Masmo, would you like to go over what our plan is for today? Sure. So for those of you, I know a lot of people are trickling in um, as we continue, but for those of you who just joined, um, so far we had a networking opportunity where we opened our location and um, the moderators have introduced themselves. So this is the agenda for today, inshallah. Um, we would like to begin with an introduction to what is TMTC. I know a lot of you have questions as to what is it? How did it come about? What is the purpose? Um, what are its goals? And um, in addition to that, also to uh, introduce you to Al Qisa Foundation. Um, I know most of you are already aware of Al Qisa Foundation, but for those of you who don't know about it or you only know about Qisa Kids, today you'll get a little like brief introduction to what Al Qisa Foundation is. And inshallah, right after that, we'll have a wonderful presentation by Mulana Abidi um, discussing the topic of curriculum and discussing our role as Muslims in America and our um, what role it plays in terms of teaching, in terms of uh, having Muslim students and all the dynamics that come up 
about it um, and uh, what our role is today and what we can do. Right after that, inshallah, we'll have a breakout session, which is a really exciting breakout session. Um, I'm really looking forward to what comes out of this breakout session where we'll have an opportunity to get into small groups, have discussions with each other on really imperative topics that it's been too long we haven't discussed these topics, and to also create something with your group. And Sister Tina, inshallah, will go into that with more detail. When we come back out of our breakout sessions, we'll have a share out where each group will have someone who represents your group, talks about what you discussed and shares what you came up with um, and inshallah closing remarks. So hopefully that's the brief outline of what to expect for today, inshallah. So uh, to briefly share with you, what is al Qissa Foundation? Um, al Qissa Foundation is a registered uh, nonprofit organization. Our mission is to create an infrastructure for Islamic education and provide support and service of the Muslim Ummah and those who are searching for the truth. So uh, to put it in, in, in another words, it's an organization that Alhamdulillah came about a couple years ago. Um, I know a lot of you, like I said earlier, are familiar with the Kissa Kids aspect, but it is a foundation that strives for um, getting resources, collaborating with educators, with scholars and different groups. And it's to serve the Muslim Ummah essentially, to give you resources, to help you um, better educate yourself in different areas. Um, and it's, uh, ha it's overseas, it's global. So we have uh, participants from all across the world and it's functions of various subsidiaries under the guidance of Mulana Nabi Raza Abadi, who you will be hearing from today as our esteemed and um, guest speaker, inshallah. So just to get you familiar with some of the different branches of Al Qissa Foundation, um, like I said, Qissa Kids, which comes out with a lot of children literature um, from the Heavenly Series to Blessed Names to the recent ones from Rahma the Raindrop and so forth. There's uh, Qissa Publications, there's Ziarat Guides, uh, there's Kissa Family, and uh, maybe some of you today who are interested can also look into Kissa Family if you want to become a volunteer for any of this, but Kissa Family is to get people um, resources and research done in all areas from parenting to matchmaking to um, marriage and all issues related to family. We also have a section on special needs. So if there are any educators on here today who specialize with special needs, it would be excellent for you to also join the special needs category of Gissa family. We also have second chance books, which is the prison project. Um, there's a magazine that goes out to prisoners. The magazines are beautiful. I highly encourage you to check them out. Um, we also have RISE education system, which um, there's RISE Academy, which is locally here in San Jose. And then we also have Rise Online, um, which Sister Tina is part of, as you can see her background. And um, they're both amazing educational institutes um, that have done so much for the community. And inshallah, we hope to talk, um, share our experiences from there today too. We also have the new Muslim initiative for reverts um, and to in just invite anyone new to Islam, how to make it more friendly for them. Um, to have, we have the Salam Institute, which has Salam Online, um, classes that take place weekly. Um, it's global right now. It's not just in America. There's also Salam Online happening um, in different parts of the world from uh, we have that Australia and different branches as well. And uh, that's basically like having a curriculum done online, especially in these times of COVID. I'm so sorry for my light not working today. I apologize for that. Um, and the last thing is, oh, sorry, two more things is APSA, which is the Ahlubayt Student Association to have a more Shia presence on campuses across America and different universities. And also Muslim Think Tank, which is somewhat related to some of the things we'll be covering today, but how are Muslims represented in the media in terms of how are, um, what are the different statistics out there? Um, how can we combat stereotypes and, and bias? So if you are interested in any of these, definitely please reach out um, to al -Qissa Foundation. And once again, I'm the networking coordinator. So if you ever feel like you're interested in any of these two, you can reach out to me personally as well. Um, with that said, Sister Nazira, if you can go ahead and explain what TMTC is today.
Yes, thank you so much, Sister Masama. Um, okay, so TMTC, why are we here? Like, what's, what is the big picture? Um, basically, we have like two, like I would say major goals. Um, one is that we want to have a, a network of teachers um, across the country or across North America um, that essentially serve the purpose, two purposes. One is that we would like to control the narrative of how Islam is per portrayed in the education sector. Um, that is, it, it can, you know, and that means, you know, the influence of teachers in the classroom, you know, the curriculum that our students are exposed to, the curriculum that, you know, non-Muslim students are exposed to. Essentially, we would need to have authorship, ownership, and control over that narrative of Muslims in the West. Um, that's goal number one, um, or actually they're not in order necessarily, but that's one goal. And the, another goal is, and a very important goal is that we would like to produce and share educational resources. Um, these resources are, you know, curriculum, curriculum supports, things like, re, uh, you know, projects, um, services, ideas, and again, that network of in educators who support one another and, um, I know for me personally, alhamdulillah, you know, living in the Bay Area, you know, it's more of a, it's an area where there are, you know, a lot of Muslims and we can connect with one another. But really, I've, I've always felt this need where um, I had to, I felt like it was kind of burdensome to go on my own and try and find ways of connecting with other Muslim educators and trying to like randomly pull resources here and there. And I know every teacher, when we have this conversation, we always say, and we oh my gosh, there has to be like, why isn't there just like a, a network that we can like hop into an easy way for us to connect? Really one of the main goals of TMTC is to become that network. So you are all playing a major role inshallah and in how that will form and inshallah today, basically we're gonna kind of walk through how we hope that we can start this. Um, Another thing is that we would like to, again, through that network, share our experiences as Muslims, um, the challenges that we face, the problems that we've come across, um, you know, and solutions that we've found and work with one another to find ways of really addressing our, our needs. The structure of the summit is um, the first session, which is today's session, is really where we're going to be doing a lot of kind of that um, important foundational work where we figure out who we are, what we want to do, what are the challenges we have, what are the hopes that we all have, what is our shared vision for the future, and really kind of build up that base in our network. Um, and then inshallah, we are we have plans for our next four sessions where we kind of really are going to start digging deep into um, the way we thought to organize it is essentially to dig deep into topics, um, education topics. So like, and inshallah, we'll get more into this later on, but basically we're going to dig into core subjects and see within this core subject, let's say, for example, language arts, what is the work that needs to be done? What is the work that needs to be done and how are we going to do it? Um, and then we're going to have essentially four series, inshallah, dedicated to language arts, um, science and math, electives, and so on. And we'll learn more about that later on, but really that's the goal inshallah in a nutshell um before we just continue i also did want to mention um that we really look forward to your feedback and we really want to hear from you and what are your needs as teachers um what are things that you are struggling with what do you wish our muslim ummah did could focus on more um, today we are presenting some ideas that we think are important, but it really matters to collaborate together, to work together, um, you know, find the, the challenges that we're facing, but also try to come up with positive solutions with each other. And inshallah, hopefully by the end of the session, if we can even get, get our group together where we can start a base to try to build towards um, a better future for the Muslim community in the West and Muslims all around the world. Um, Sister Tina, do you, would you like to explain the icebreaker or I can go ahead? <clears throat> um, so um, basically we're doing a one word game. Um, so I, for example, if you ever hear um, one word, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear this word? So what we're going to do in the next couple of slides is we're going to show you one word. So if you can get your fingers ready to chat in the chat box and write down what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear this word. And part of the reason why we're doing this is to try to lay down the groundwork for today's presentation and start us to start thinking about what do we, what are our thoughts when we come to certain ideas. So the example we gave 
this chocolate and of course I had to be to we had to use Cadbury because it's such a good one but you know anything that you can think of that comes to your mind when you hear that word so uh, there will be three words and we'll start off with the first word and give you like um, maybe 30 seconds to go ahead and type what comes to your mind and I'm excited to see what everyone comes up with. Um, Masama, let's let's waterfall it. So for those of you who have um, who are familiar with the concept, we'll we'll pro we'll project the word, Sister Masama, and then um, everyone will type out your word, and then we'll say three, two, one, enter, and then we'll see what our chat fills up with. Okay, perfect. perfect. Let's do it. Okay, the word is curriculum. So everyone, go ahead and write out the first word in the chat, but don't hit send yet. Okay, do not press enter. Okay. Everyone type it out. Okay, everyone should have their word and three, two, one, waterfall. Oh. Whoa, there we go. Okay, I see content, I see boring, I see learning, I see syllabus, steps, problems. Map, vast, collaboration, Islamic curriculum, again, content, books, text, complicated, Eurocentric. Ooh, I like that one, Sister Sakaina. We're gonna mm -hmm. talk about that. <laughs> Equitable, roadmap, goals, Islamic, scope and sequence, limiting. That's it's right, Sister Thamido. All of these are amazing, mashallah. Um, standardized, institutionalized, mashallah. Yeah, so. Curriculum, that's a broad topic. And um, I think more or less we're getting this idea that all of us are realizing that it's super standardized and there's definitely to some degree some problems at least, right? Great. All right, are we ready for the next word? You guys ready? Get your fingers ready. Let's do it. <laughs> and then we'll do the three, two, one waterfall again, right Nazira? Yep, yep, we'll do the three, two, one waterfall. Let's go. Bias. Okay, everyone, first word that pops into your mind, go ahead and type it out, but don't hit send yet. I'm gonna do mine too. Okay, and three, two, one waterfall. Wow. <laughs> wow, subhanAllah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, racist, point of view, implicit, limiting, stereotypes, equity, closed minded, internal opinion, skewed, inherent, unavoidable. Mm, that was a smart one. Okay, they're, I mean, they're all smart, excuse me. <laughs> But that one in particular stuck out to me. Islamophobia, discrimination, overcome, embedded. Really interesting. Mashallah. Teachers, I mean, educators are my favorite people. Molana, you agree? <laughs> Racism, media, perception. Yeah, mashallah. Absolutely. Okay. Are we ready for the next one? Our last and final one. Okay, voice is ready, everyone. I mean, fingers ready, and the word is voice. Okay, don't hit send yet. Voice, and 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 um, I think it's important for me to kind of say voice here doesn't necessarily mean like you know the actual sound of a voice, but the idea of a voice. Um, what is what is what does that mean to have a voice? Okay, ready. Three, two, one, waterfall. Inherent right, feeling, power, freedom, valuable, representation, be seen, women, make it count, missing. Yeah, missing, Sister Sakina again. Unheard, um, Hussein Ibn Ali. Okay, Imam Hussein, mashallah, okay. Um, power, 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 re revolutionary, silenced, heard, passion, power, wow, mashallah, amazing. And I know that, inshallah, um, Molana, I think his presentation is going to be 
um, speaking to all of these things, which I think we all have, you know, at the forefront of our mind. I think that's the point of this activity, which Sister Mossimus, you know, as she said, is to get our juices flowing, get the brain flowing, start to get us in the right mindset. And also to show like, we all have, you know, we all have like obviously some different um, things that we brought just with like one word, but there was overall like a very similar kind of mood to each one of these. And so inshallah Molana with his presentation, we'll be going over that, I think in more depth. Okay, on that note, I think um, Sister Mossima, would you like to please introduce our beloved Dr. Molana Nabi Reza Abadi? Okay, sure, one second. Okay, I can, I think I can do that. <laughs> Sister Mosma looks like she's busy at the moment. I'm sorry. I'm so um, sorry. Um, I think it's, uh, Sister Nazir, you do have the bio, but um, if you could read it, please. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, yes, I will. I actually don't have Moana's bio. Okay. In front actually, of me. I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Um, <laughs> so I have it, I just pulled it up. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, so Malana Nabi Reza Abdi was born in Alipur in India. I know most of you already know him, but this is a little background and some interesting facts about him just to learn about our keynote speaker today. Um, he was raised in a, a religious family after completing his early education. He moved to Iran at the age of 14 to pursue Islamic studies. He spent the first two years in Najafabad learning Farsi, basic Arabic grammar and Ahkam. He then spent 14 years in Qum, where he studied at Hujatiya Fadiya and the Institute of Imam Jafar Sadiq under Ayatollah Jafar Subhani. Concurrently, he earned his PhD from the University of Tehran. After completing his lower level studies, he participated in Dars al Qarij under reputable scholars such as Ayatollah Jafar Subhani. Ayatollah Fadil Lankarani, Ayatollah Makarim Shirazi, and many others. Mulana Abdi spent four years answering questions in the office of Grand Ayatollah Fadil Lankarani and another five years conducting research in theology and philosophy under Ayatollah Jafar Subhani, where he also helped write and publish books on various topics. For the next five years, he taught usul of fiqh, philosophy, and tafsir for five years in Hujatiya, Fadiya, and Jami Atul Zahra. So going back to more current times right now, since 2002, Milana has been part of the Bay Area here in California. He moved to San Jose to serve as the resident alum of Sabah Islamic Center here in the Bay Area. Under his guidance, Sabah has expanded tremendously, alhamdulillah, and we're so blessed to have him. And he has incorporated many successful undertakings, including a full-time school at Rise Academy. Additionally, he has helped to establish and overlook many masjids. He's also the founder of Al Qissa Foundation and its subsidiaries, including Qissa Kids. Mulana Abidi serves on various school boards, provides guidance to several full time and weekend Islamic schools around the world, as well as provides guidance to Sabah, Sunday School, and Rise Academy. He continues to further his studies in Irfan philosophy and Dars al Qarij with renowned scholars. Um, with that said, I am humbled and honored to uh, present to you, Milana Abadi. If we can all pray for his health and, inshallah, his um, uh, ability to continue leading us in this community, inshallah, with a loud salawat. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام تحت الإكرام على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين الشهداء والصالحين والصديقين وعلى خير خلقه البشير النذير الصراج المنير بالقاسم محمد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعن دائما لا أعدائهم أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم هو الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يطلع عليهم آياته وزكيهم يعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة من كان من قبل في ضلال مبين 
وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ان مثل العلماء في الارض كمثل النجوم في السماء يهتدي بها في الظلمات البر والبحر صدق الله وصدق رسوله وصدق ولي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه first and foremost i would like to welcome all of you it's my honor and pleasure to be uh, here with you in this uh, great uh, uh, saturday morning or noon time uh, depending on where you are may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and give us strength and tawfiq to perform our duties and responsibilities and also may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless upon us and all the muslim ummah all the bounties and blessings of this great month a month of jumaat al awwal and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to be a great ambassador and also a role model for uh, our muslim ummah and also others uh or like to thank all of you for your special time for your uh, precious time uh you want to dedicate uh for the sake of uh, uh learning more and also collaboration for the uh, future uh, uh goals inshallah and also I'd like to thank our management and also all those who work uh behind the scene for days and alhamdulillah sister tina sister nazira and sister uh masuma all of them they make my job easier uh, i don't know i don't have to go uh, in details alhamdulillah they have a great uh, you know uh, goals and also they set up a good uh, a foundation inshallah we can talk and discuss uh, i'm going to just uh, elaborate uh, some of the uh, points inshallah and also sister uh, nazira she will help me in this presentation to uh, navigate us about the facts and also we can uh, understand a better scope and picture where we are in inshallah so basically this hadith which you can see here uh, is one of the uh, great uh, outstanding hadith for me personally all the all, all the hadith and also uh, teachings of ahlul bayt and quran is amazing Uh, but sometimes some of the ahadith are kind of outstanding you can get lots of uh, uh, you know blessings uh, from that hadith or that sayings of imam or uh, instruction from quran so this hadith from noble prophet of islam is something can be a, a kind of our uh, uh, guide uh, for any type of difficulties we are facing especially in this educational field when it comes to uh, the uh, teachers and whether your teacher or admin or directors or principals or any position or uh, is serving a great noble cause for the future generations in this regard noble prophet islam he says inna mathala ulama fil ard indeed the example of scholars yes scholars ulama is not necessarily the one who is studying in home or teaching or on no any type of guidance nurturing preparing our future generations to be a great leader as a alim right you basically your teacher your alim you are the guide and the example of that is like the example of stars basically when you are teaching when you take a step towards school take any effort towards making this great uh, uh, noble cause uh, uh, to happen as you are giving the light to others this light is amazing basically your navigation you know your navigation your light your guide for the future generations and furthermore hadith says that if this light stops a great number of people will go astray will lose their way right or if they don't do their duty and responsibility the same thing basically uh, i would like to address to you as a teachers i know that alhamdulillah from different uh, part of the united states you are here inshallah 
And we want to understand the uh, importance of being a teacher. First, we have to understand that teacher, it means you are doing the job of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The job of prophet. Your job is job of imams. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is considered as muallim, teacher. Noble Prophet of Islam is a muallim. Or, pra, or imams are muallim. So having this lavish, great title is amazing. Alhamdulillah. That's one. The second thing to understand, because once we don't understand our scope of work and also the uh, uh, in a position where we are in, it's very difficult to uh, give 100% to this uh, noble cause, right? The second thing we have to understand is teachers are the best ambassadors. And perhaps they are the best role models of any culture, religion, or ideology. And also, over the course of history, it's proven that teachers are the most influential figure to change and shape the future of any society. Me and you, those who committed to this noble cause, we are contributing towards navigating the future generations. We're shaping the future of our society. It's a very important. And also, we have to understand that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can reward. I know that some of the uh, countries uh, like Finland, maybe they have a high pay for a teacher because teacher, they consider as a physicians are perhaps one layer higher than the physicians. But unfortunately in America are lots of countries that's not the case. But I know that those who are committed to this path, they are looking true reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why in a hadith and riwayat, some of the places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hadith al Qudsi, he says that, Ana ajri, I will be the reward. You know, some of the ahdith we have, the reward is like, for example, the paradise or the status or mansion or this and that. But when it comes to the teacher, the reward of the teacher is Allah himself. That is And the part that beloved Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says that, man allamani harfan faqad sayyirani abda. The one who taught me even one word, he made me his or her servant. Alhamdulillah, that's why when it comes to the uh, positions after parents, the highest person who should be regarded in Islam is a teacher. So basically you as a teacher, you don't have your own children. Maybe mashallah, some of you have a 10, 12 children. All this is very difficult to understand here in America, but maybe five, six, I hope that each and every one of you, because you want to be a role model, you can inshallah have 10 plus children, or 12 plus children, but nonetheless, you're not the only parents of your own children. You'll be the parents of all those whom you have a great influence. That's the very important point to understand. So our scope, when it comes to our scope, is to change and shape the future leaders. How we can do that? Basically, if you want to see a better future, plan, nurture, the, you know, your students by holistic, approach. No matter your math teacher, a science teacher, or social studies, or language arts, or your uh, elective teachers, or you know, homeroom teachers, or Quran teachers, whatever the uh, you know, uh, uh, subject you're teaching, basically 
you're not teaching only that subject. You're shaping, you're preparing the future leaders. And that is the scope. This beautiful verse from Quran, Surah Al Jum'ah, also describe the position of teacher like me and you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. This is the first part. Now I want to go to the uh, you know, next uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, point. Basically, uh, brothers, sisters, uh, teachers, uh, beloved uh, educators, we know that we have two types of teachings. One is open source. Open source, anyone can go, anyone can learn, and so on and so forth. That is not limited to any uh, established system. So from uh, Hadith and Riwayats, uh, uh, from cradle to uh, caste, I mean, basically there is no limit from the time we open our eyes here in this world till we close our eye, we are in the process of learning. And that's very important. And that's the very important point. According to Hadith and Rivaya also, uh, basically we should spend in three states if we want to be a successful one. If you, are, like, if you want to see any loser, the one who doesn't spend in one of these three positions. One is either we should be either in the state of learning or in the state of teaching or in the state of practicing what we learn. Basically, our time 24 seven should be revolving around either I'm learning something, teaching something, or practice, practicing what I learned, right? So in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, in the light of this uh, explanation, all, all of us, we are learning and teaching, right? There's no limit, that's open source. But when it comes to the, uh, you know, educational system, systematic learning, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, system, we, the most important element is K to 12. And then, although we have a pre-K also, it's also very important, and lots of studies happen and so on and so forth, I don't want to uh, you know, uh, draw the conclusion that the only K-12 is important. Just I'm giving you, this is one of the main component, K-12. to And then you have a college degrees and so on and so forth. When it comes to the K-12, we have a three main component we have to, you know, we are dealing with. One is types of structure, basically our structure, like a school, right? Whether you're learning virtually, then you need to have a great uh, strong LMS in order to uh, you know, teach better. Second one is could be homeschooling. As, as your own structure, your home become a, a school and some of our sisters and brothers, they choose to have a homeschooling for the children. And then you have uh, charter schools, private schools, whether faith-based like Islamic you know, schools or Catholic and so on and so forth, or non-faith-based school, which is could be secular or could be scale-based like a magnet school and so on and so forth. Or majority of our students, they are going to the public school, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. Even in America, majority of the students, they are going to the public school. So these are the uh, you know, structure uh, you need to consider. The second uh, component is the philosophy and pedagogy. So philosophy and pedagogy, lots of these philosophies and pedagogies which exist in terms of uh, uh, the uh, uh, way of teaching is either limited to a very uh, uh, small number of uh, uh, students uh, like uh, you know the uh, Montessori and so on and so forth, or, or uh, you know some of that is kind of blended, right? Even the philosophy also the same thing. But when it comes to the uh, main ingredient, which is components of education, which we need all of us, one of the major focus is the curriculum. And you as a teacher, you know the importance of curriculum. And if you have a good curriculum, more uh, you know, instruction and easy and hands-on and so on and so forth, you can have a better 
uh, you know, uh, time to um, prepare and also give back to the uh, you know, students and so on and so forth. So although we know that curriculum is not the only component of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for the teachers, but this is one of the very important. And also you have a supplemental for the curriculum um, or you have uh, projects. Uh, so sometimes you use novels and videos and um, you know, experiments, uh, virtual uh, aids and also field trips and so on and so forth. Basically when student comes to you, even when they are you know, in the home, you give them some, for example, projects and so on and so forth, that could be a very good system to be connected and they're going to be in the state of learning and experimenting and so on and so forth. And also some of, sometimes you use a different philosophies and pedagogies and also, uh, you know, the teacher's scales and how to influence and how to have a better connection and so on and so forth. So these are the three main components we have in order to have a better, uh, you know, uh, the, the result. So in terms of uh, structure, Structure is not in the control of me and you. Yes, we want to have Islamic schools across the world, but that's limited, right? Because lots, a large number of the uh, people, they are going to the public school or private school, or it's impossible to have a, an Islamic schools everywhere. But that's kind of limited. Alhamdulillah, that's not a problem. We have that. But second component is pedagogy, philosophy. Maybe you can have a blended one and so on and so forth. Basically that's a kind of a methodology and also you want to uh, use some more techniques and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the curriculum and also content, this is the most important, important component to understand. And this, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the light of this uh, you know, component, which I talk and discuss about the third one, I want to give you a better idea where we are and what kind of blessings we are having. And often we don't take advantage of that blessing. So in America, Alhamdulillah, all of you, are, you have a good experience, perhaps your teachers, principals, admin, uh, and so on and so forth. We do have a luxury of freedom in curriculum, supplemental curriculum, projects, and uh, different types of uh, uh, you know uh, aids to uh, teach that. Although some of the private schools or even some public schools, they mandate you to be within that. Uh, you know, uh, scope of the curriculum, or they minded that only you need to teach this book or so on and so forth. But for majority of the uh, you know schools, you know, lots of free hand, right? It's not like some of the countries, even developed countries like UK and Australia. The job of making sure that you you know, you are teaching properly as government. And government comes and impose you that you should only use this. You should do this. And in India, Pakistan, other countries also, all the curriculums are certified by the Ministry of Education. And they minded that how, where, and what type of things you can use. But in America, what we do has, what we have is the education ministry doesn't impose that. Rather, they come up with a common core. And also that leads to a majority of the public, in the private school and also, uh, you know, even some of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, online schools and so on and so forth, they rely on accreditation, accreditation, whether WASC or SASC or Cogni or any of those, they go with a common core system and they don't impose that you need to teach this, this one, two, three, four, five, right? So basically either a school or the teachers, they have a free hand and they have a lot to add and to kind of bring as a supplemental to that, right? So now, 
in order to understand a better where we are, as I said, all the curriculums in America is not imposed by government. Ministry of Education, it's by the big companies. And those companies, we need to understand their background, what they are doing, and how they come up with a curriculum and the change of the curriculum. Inshallah, in the uh, uh, coming uh, workshops, you're going to have a better idea, focused idea about language arts, uh, you know, uh, social studies and history, uh, math and science and electives and so on and so forth. But today I want to give you a broader picture so all of us, we can be on the same page, right? As I said, we are in America and we have a free hand. In this regard, we are relying on some of the companies, quote unquote, they are not government uh, uh, you know, funded companies. They are doing that. So who are those companies? Uh, yes, sister, can you go back to, uh, no, can you go back? Yes, thank you, Zakima. So, so here is the point. I want to uh, ask sister Nazira, please uh, give a little bit uh, of the factual points here. Thank you so much, Molana. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, essentially Molana is asking the question, where do our textbooks come from? And um, looking at information gathered by Simba Information, which is like a market research company, uh, essentially there are, there's, um, you know, 80% of the curriculum that's used in classrooms in America come from four big publishers. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with um, at least one of them, if not all of them, Pearson, McGraw-Hill, Houghton Mifflin, and Reed S. Um, L. Sevier. That one was a new one for me because I actually learned that Reed L. Sevier actually um, owns a bunch of companies that make a lot of like the college textbooks. Um, so I, and it's not on this slide, but further research I, I've done in, through some information market research company shows that in the K to 12 space, um, the big three are again, the top three, Pearson, McGraw-Hill and Houghton Mifflin. And those three in the K to 12 space provide um, upwards of like 65% of all curriculum in all K to 12 classrooms. So if you see that, although I know that maybe your school, they are choosing different, uh, uh, you know, the curriculums, whether like wet and wisdom or, or uh, you know, college boards and so on and so forth, just, you know, to have a better idea because nonetheless, whether you're using these four main core, uh, you know, companies or any other companies, everyone, they have their own system to bring the content and to uh, uh, bring what they should, what you are you know, uh, teaching. Basically, this is a very important point, uh, sisters, brothers, to understand that no schools or no even universities are creating a knowledge. They are users of knowledge. It's not that K-12 school, we are creating the knowledge and we are nurturing that. No, we're using the knowledge others they built and we're using. How that happens? Next slide, please. Yes, here, Sister uh, Nazira, go ahead. Okay, um, again, this information, um, we have our sources listed at the bottom, uh, a couple of different sources. Um, the National School Boards Association is gonna be an important one here as long with uh, some of the other ones listed here, including um, University of Rochester, some research that they've done and so on. But essentially that the current US textbook market is very lucrative. It's roughly $10 billion a year. Most major publishers are catering to large adoption states um, and the largest of which are Texas and California. Um, and what that means is essentially um, there's there's adoption states and there's open territory states and more recently it's kind of changed and you know i'm sure some of you are way more familiar with this than i am but essentially um some states uh essentially reg they regulate what kind of curriculum is allowed for districts to then adopt and so again amongst the biggest ones we have texas and california and if the state board of those states, for example, doesn't approve a curriculum, then no schools in that state can then adopt it. No school districts can adopt it. So essentially, um, publishers are catering to 
these big states where their majority of their contracts or you know the lump of their contracts are being made and so that's why there's this big deal in education you hear about it a lot you'll hear about it a lot through your teachers associations about you know the adoption states and what are they adopting and then how does that affect the rest of the states and so on and so forth um, this is important for us to think about in NOAA, as Moana will talk about, inshallah. Um, three, some of the leading curriculum publishers have associations with lobbyist groups and strong political, and these lobbyist groups have strong political or social agendas, which inshallah we'll get into in a moment. And finally, um, current consultations on Islamic culture and history are done by biased or self-proclaimed expert groups. Um, and in our research, we found Wahhabi influence groups uh, and inshallah, we'll get into this, I think, in a moment. So you can see that basically, <laughs> uh, you know, when I talk and discuss with other colleagues and other people that we are users of knowledge, not creators of knowledge, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, schools or universities and so on and so forth, uh, people, they don't understand the complete picture of that because the knowledge the, 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 all the content is you know, done and written somewhere else. And just all these institutions are using that, right? So in this case, when you see the example of California and Texas, two different you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, opposite, uh, opposite philosophy, right? One is more conservative and one is more uh, uh, kind of uh, the uh, um, you know, liberal. So both kind of a double-edged sword for us, right? From both sides. And this is something maybe inshallah you can talk and discuss in your workshop also, how is uh, uh, you know influencing and so on and so forth because of the time. Just I want to focus on the time. Next slide, please. Yes, Sister Nazira. Okay, so um, in the previous slide, we talked about how, um, wh who are the curriculum publishers consulting with? We found um, one group that we'd like to highlight. So one group of experts, this is from the Consortium of Educational Resources on Islamic Studies, um, CERIS, -E I believe. And we've highlighted here these experts, um, this is straight taken from their website, so you can check that out if you'd like to, who their current or, or their past presidents and officers are, and you can take a look at who they are who are representing Muslims as experts in curriculum. Um, sure. None of these people are Muslim. So I just want to give you one uh, a simple, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, thought provoking point. In Alipur, I'm from village Alipur, India. In Alipur, when they uh, uh, pick for the, uh, some of the, you know, kind of entertainment, uh, uh, you know, con contest or competition happen. And one of those is uh, the uh, uh, food competition who make uh, better food, right? So you need to have experts to check uh, the uh, that who, uh, like which example, uh, who cook better and so on and so forth. The one who is kind of evaluating or giving the, uh, uh, you know, uh, ranks are, guess what? Not the expert chef or cook and so on and so forth. The most influential people are those who are backed by the influential people, right? So in that case, they choose like three or four people including, for example, because I was visiting from America, they thought that, okay, because I have some quote unquote, uh, you know, the, the uh, influence. So, okay, for example, RBD is one, and one is uh, the most, uh, uh, you know, the, the influential person as a politics and so on and so forth. I was thinking, how, how what I can do? I don't know, because if, if I'm hungry, I can eat any food, which is halal, alhamdulillah. But I'm not expert to say biryani, this biryani is better, that, that biryani is better, right? So, but what they're looking is, they want to see who's, you know, influential person and whose agenda can be driven. So end of the day, they have the uh, winners and they want to just get the blessing of us to announce that. So this is the same thing. These people, what you can see is that they don't pop it up by themselves. They are not expert in Islam. Rather, 
they came from a different backgrounds who funds better you can go you can see uh, you know search more a little bit more about uh, those who are influential people figures about islamic uh, contents you will understand by the way in 1990s or before 1990s none of the textbook were talking about Islam that much right now after 1990s especially nowadays in fourth grade fifth grade seventh grade you can see some of the uh, you know history about Islam social histories and history the talk and discuss about Islam and that's also amazing sister Nazira go ahead next slide okay and um, we had an example um, that we would like to share with you all so in the spring, and some of you probably have read about this and you remember it, in the spring of 2016, um, McGraw-Hill uh, faced a little bit of criticism um, and they stopped selling. And not only did they stop selling a textbook, a political science textbook of theirs, but they uh, withdrew their political science textbook and in fact destroyed all copies of their textbook for featuring uh, what was called anti-Israel maps. Um, and essentially this group called the Israel Project, which is a pro-Palestinian, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a pro-Israel lobbying outfit that's like very well known for um, kind of their anti-Muslim, anti-Palestinian uh, like propaganda, um, created kind of like a, essentially like a, a storm on the internet um, with, regarding this textbook. Um, and then one more important piece of information for you all is that at that time, uh, the president and CEO of McGraw-Hill was David Lennon, and his brother is Jeremy Levin, I'm sorry, Levin. Um, Jeremy Levin is the CEO of Teva Pharmaceutical Industries, which at the time was the largest company in Israel by market capital, and it is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. So you can see that is everything is connected. It's not something occidental or organic or you know we are no is someone some planning is doing and we are the product and result of that planning so if we do some plan we can see the product inshallah in the near future next slide please yes sister go ahead okay and this is um the source is gallup polls and this poll shows about half of Americans from major religious groups believe most Americans are prejudiced towards Muslim Americans. Um, bullying of Muslim children, Muslims are nearly twice as likely to report bullying um, than Jewish Americans, 42% versus 23, and four times more likely than the general public. Um, harassment of Muslim teachers, there's been, and I'm sure all of you know about this, we haven't cited it here, but plenty of harassment that Muslim teachers have recently faced. Um, if you just Google it, even the news articles and so on, how Muslim teachers have been harassed by even their own students and, you know, their colleagues and their administrators and so on. And the widespread misinformation and notions of Islamophobia. According to the Gallup poll, despite knowing a Muslim American personally, 43% of Americans believe that Islam brings harm to non-believers. So basically, if you uh, see that all of this, these are the few effects of you know, bias in curriculum and also what is happening in uh, the schools. And this product of the school is the future of the uh, you know, society. And what you see, for example, just a couple of days back, the uh, attack in Capitol Hill, so-called is considered as a mobs. It's not a mobs because you will see that pretty much half of the country is kind of going towards that uh, you know, ideology. So you're talking about more than that, and you can see that, for example, lots of these types of efforts are embedded, rooted in a society. You can see that if the same attack, a same rally happens from you know other groups, just imagine that me and you, we Muslim, we go there with hijab, with something, or if one of us we are wearing a mama, if I was there chanting, just you see what will happen. Why? It's not because of you know, just a, a coincidence, it's a rooted in their ideology. They see how they, you know, uh, the things are. Next slide, please. 
Yes, go ahead, sister. Um, okay, so further text on teaching Islam. Uh, the source for this is um, the American Textbook Council, as well as new ar news articles, um, which you can look up later on. Uh, individuals and lobbyists are fighting every day to remove or vilify Islam in textbooks. In particular, there's a gentleman, I don't know if I should call him gentleman, there's a man <laughs> named Gilbert Sewell, who is um, all over the internet. He is um, you know, an educational leader and, the found, and a founder of the American Textbook Council. And um, essentially he um, argues very vehemently and leads people um, and he goes to school boards and you know state boards and so on to essentially argue, and there's a quote from him here, let's read it. It says, from what they read in history textbooks, students and teachers are not likely to grasp why the United States and its allies considered militant Islam an enemy. So essentially that he argues the opposite end. So, you know, and it's not only he, but like many are arguing that, you know, Islam is portrayed too, um, too nicely in curriculum. And that's essentially what his, what he does. In December 2015, a Virginia school district temporarily closed all public schools following an Islam related lesson in world geography course. Residents were angry that students were learning about Islam at all. So for an, due to an, you know, a lesson on Islam, the entire school district shut down all the schools. And those are just a few examples. Thank you, Zach. Next slide, please. So basically, uh, you know, uh, what I want to bring to your attention is we cannot hope or aim or just do dua to have some change. No. If you want to see any change, it has to come from us, me and you. If you want to change something, it's me and you. I don't want to say that it's too late now, but we need to run fast. Representation matters. If we don't run fast, we'll lose the opportunity. Alhamdulillah, Muslims, especially after 1950s, they began to grow in America. And right now in millions, right? So once we have a millions of Muslims, we want to see some representations and the best representation can happen is from schools. Teacher is the best option for us to be a great ambassador of Islam. Next slide, please. Because of the time fire, I know that I'm running a little bit late, more than what I was uh, hoping, uh, but brothers and sisters, very important to understand that these are the points that if you want to change some narrative, whether in curriculum or in anywhere else, it's duty of me and you. It's not only doing dua or hoping or claiming, or for example, most of the times we are motivated by emotions, want to chant, want to go, for example, do this one, two, three, all of that. That's not going to resolve anything. Real change will come. Spirit teachers, if we as a teachers, we can see some, inshallah, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the good, uh, you know, collaboration, cooperation, we can see the best result. Brothers and sisters, this is my humble request to all of you that by putting our efforts, optimization of our qualities, our talent, mashallah, each and every one of you, you have a great talent, great wisdom, wisdom, talent, and also a good sincere intentions. With that, we can start from now. I know that maybe sometimes it's uphill battle, but if we start slowly with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can see a great change especially nowadays we are living in a different era and time, digital age, right? So with this digital, digital, digital age, we can optimize our efforts. We can be connected to MTC. That's the beautiful point, right? The main thing is this humble request appeal that we can be connected to each other, we understand. And once we understand, let's focus on 
could be, inshallah, we can change some of the curriculums. Oh, create our own curriculums or have lots of supplementations, lots of you know, uh, teacher's aid, help. Maybe each and every one of you have some of example projects. If you have a good guidelines for the projects and so, so forth, let's put together and bring it to in one platform and we can share each other. We can optimize that and we can see the best result, inshallah, in the uh, uh, in all, uh, four more uh, workshops, which is ahead of us, we can talk and discuss targetly about, for example, language arts, then math and science, social studies and history, and electives. So the idea is to start some better connections and collaborations and take the initiate and lead in this area. I know that once we start and begin today, Inshallah, in a couple of years ahead of us, we can see a great change. The change will be fast, especially when it comes to the haq and truth. Because when Holy Prophet, he was in siege in Mecca for 13 years, no one can imagine or thought that he can create a government in a couple of months in Medina. Once he saw the gate towards opportunity, he optimized that. He brought the community. He started, although he was only one, then multiplied by his ikhlas. And you see today, mashallah, 1.8 billion Muslims, and we can represent better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, preside his salawats. Allahumma salallahu alayhi wa MashaAllah, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Moana. Um, I know I personally have gained so much from, from that presentation. Um, and I'm sure everyone else here has as, as well. And it made me think about you know, the waterfall activity we did at the beginning, where we talked about those words, curriculum, bias, and voice, and how they're all so related that you know, you know, if we want to have a voice, we need to start looking at our curriculum, we need to start looking at our representation. And um, if it, no one's gonna hand us the platform to control the Muslim narrative, we have to own it because at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. We need to take ownership and you know, control the narrative. So thank you so much, Moana. May Allah bless you. Um, one thing I also wanted to add in is that a lot of the times, if you do look at the sections in textbooks that have um, Islam in them, if you see the way they present our holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's often that you know when he got the revelation of islam he was quivering he was shaking he runs away and and other times the way that they present islam no mention of like the way that we perceive islam and it's often done through the lens of um the sunni history and some very often wahhabi influenced and um Alhamdulillah, we have the opportunity, like Mulana said, America is so unique in that we can have like the opportunity to create our own curriculums and to come and brainstorm and collaborate. And we have that ability to say like, let's present Islam the way that we know it to be true and accurate to the world and actually let them see a, a version of it that they've never realized is and you know let the critics complain if they want to complain like uh, seawall as sister nasira mentioned but we have that unique opportunity alhamdulillah thank you for that presentation Milana. okay and with that now we are super excited because this is the part where we get to do what um, you know, Dr. Molana Abidi has kind of set the stage for, which is for us to start to really you know, do the work and get to know each other and network and talk about things. So Sister Tina, would you like to go ahead and explain um, our breakouts, inshallah? Inshallah, inshallah. Um, we are going to be doing breakout rooms and um, inshallah everybody will be camera ready shortly because it's sometimes very challenging even as an educator to talk to a whole room of boxes um, like little black boxes with your names on them so we'd really appreciate if you take a moment to 
get camera ready, inshallah. Um, so once you're in the room, you will have a task. So we do have um, a slide projection that we're going to put up here. And I just want to give you a little heads up before we get to that point. So you'll be divided into breakout rooms. Now, I tried to do my best to assign you to a breakout room, but some of you guys will be left in the main room and inshallah will get you to an assigned breakout room shortly. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with how breakout rooms work in Zoom, it should automatically take you there once we start the breakout room. But if not, there's a little blue button at the bottom of your screen that's on like your menu bar um, and it should say join breakout room. So once we do start the breakout rooms, if you do get left behind or you need to uh, sign back in, you should be pre-assigned and just click join breakout room and we'll help guide you there if you do happen to get lost along the way. Um, everybody's breakout room will have a number assigned to it and you will then have a slide area that you will do your different activities on. So when you get into your breakout room, we're going to start with an icebreaker to get to know everybody in your group so that we can get comfortable. So this is a portion of the presentation where you would get your um, item that represents you or a book that's your favorite and you'd be ready to share it. So that's the point of the presentation that we will be utilizing that item that was mentioned in the, um, uh, in the email that was sent out last night. Then we'll have three guided discussion questions that I'll go over really quick before we start our breakout rooms. And it will be your responsibility to, as a team, assign a note taker, a facilitator, and a discussion lead so that you can go ahead and um, complete the activity. So I'm going to right here project our breakout room activity. Um, and then I'll explain it and then I'll share the breakout room or this PowerPoint slide with you in the chat, inshallah. So again, like I said, um, you'll be assigned into breakout rooms and you'll be able to be a note taker, a facilitator or a discussion lead. So the note taker will be taking notes from the group and putting it on their slide. The facilitator will help keep the conversation going and on track. And the discussion lead is somebody that you'll appoint in your group to share out when we come back into this large breakout room or into this large meeting room um, and then be able to discuss what we talked about in our breakout rooms. And then um, so we have our icebreaker, our guided discussion and then our share out. So our guided discussion questions for today, we have three. One is what it is to be an educator that makes you feel fulfilled as a Muslim. Your next question would be to describe an experience as a Muslim educator that you felt conflicted either in your values um, when it comes to either policy, management, curriculum, instruction, environment, or maybe an interaction of a difference in beliefs. And then finally, the golden question, right? Um, if you were given the keys to administration, what changes would you implement to make the curriculum be more holistic? And so you guys will have um, your slides available, but we do have a little example um, that you can either present number three, so that major golden question. Um, you can make a public service announcement, an infographic, um, a video clip, artwork, a slogan. So it's a little bit of a creative project. I know that sometimes when we get creative projects, we always want to give them to our students, right? But the minute you give a creative project, all of a sudden we have like a bazillion questions. But need not to worry, we are not grading you on this assignment today. It is supposed to be fun and enjoyable and a way to really think about how you would want to change education. So here's a couple examples. So just like here's like um, some examples of what you know you might find on your slide. I encourage you all to be very creative and just be free flowing. So um, without further ado, um, we will put in the um, chat box here um, a link to the slides and everybody will end up on this um, main slide. So our landing slide is what I'm going to call it. And when you have your breakout room, it will say room and a number and then your area. So it will say like room one, preschool, pre-K and kindergarten. Um, so then you would click on room one and then it will take you to room one slides and then you guys would be able to go ahead and type on those slides. Everybody has this slide with their room number. Um, and then they have a second blank slide so that if you are, um, this is for your step three, your creative slide. So the first one's kind of like for your note taking and then the next one is for you to be creative. Okay, 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to stop screen share real quick and then I will stick this in the chat for you guys. Um, if you wanted to use a tiny URL, um, you can definitely use that, but please, please, please be cognizant of when you go into this document to only work on your slide number. So. Um, are there any questions? If there, if you are um, not able to turn on your camera, um, you can participate by typing in the chat. We just would really love to see everybody's faces um, because it's a lot easier to have a conversation when we can see y'all. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start the breakout rooms. And like I said, you should be pre-assigned. And if you're not pre-assigned, um, I will move you then after the breakout rooms start. Uh, Mr. Tina, before yes. you go ahead and do that, okay. Wanted, sorry. <clears throat> I wanted to mention that inshallah as moderators will be coming into the room to help you along as well if you need any help. <clears throat> we are um, going short on time so we want to maybe stick to 15 minutes if possible. So as soon as you get in if you can start right away inshallah. Sister Nazira had an example related to our topic today with curriculum with a bookshelf. Sister Nazira if you could just explain it for one minute so we can kind of stick to more the theme of today's topic. Okay, sure, no problem. Okay, so this is actually my my bad. I was going to make an example of what, you know, for your, basically there's three questions that Sister Tina mentioned, right? So for the third one, you're going to have a, instead of just like writing out your answer or like speaking your answer, you're going to creatively display your answer. Um, so the idea was um, that I came up with that I didn't make, so it's not a great exemplar, but you know, just work with me friends, okay? Um, was like, I was thinking, okay, an example of something that I would do or I would like to do perhaps in my group to change curriculum is to get like, you know, a, a, you know, a set of books that represent the curriculum that I would like to see adopted in schools. So the idea was maybe I would get a picture of a bookshelf from the internet, put it on the slide, and then, you know, pull some titles of books that I would like to see embedded in the curriculum. So I might have a picture of Howard Zinn's um, A People's History of, of, America, uh, of the U.S., right? Like, a picture of that book title or other things that so kind of represents like it's a creative display of you know an answer for that for that question if that makes sense um and again like Masuma says Sister Masuma said we'll be going around into different different rooms and kind of helping facilitate the process of it too all right excellent so we're going to go ahead and open the breakout rooms and inshallah you guys should all be directed to a room that um has a room number so that you know what slide to go to and then um your your group Okay, so um, I will try to move you guys now. If you guys are still stuck in here. Um, Tasneem, um, what grade level? <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> you got this. Pre-K kindergarten, sorry. Okay. No problem, welcome, salam. Okay. Thank Tahira? you. Tahira? Yes, I'm What grade level? Um, if you all, whoever's left can put in the chat room your grade level, it'll help Sister Tina put you in the breakout room according to what like um, grade level you teach. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and move you to fifth grade.
Oh, um, I actually might have to move you guys. Um, but let me just double check. Sister Tina, I think we can assign them to all the rooms or somehow they can rotate, usually co host are able to rotate. Yeah, um, I think I just have to um, allow it, but let me give it a second. I think we have three people left, right? Or four. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like I have to um, assign you guys. If you click on breakout rooms at the bottom, can you go to one or no? Uh, we're not able to see the breakout. Okay, that's so true. Everybody should be allowed to see it. Okay, um, I can just um, rotate you, just come back to the main room and then I'll just stick you in a new room. Okay, right. cool. So, um, so yeah. do they have the links to the breakout room doc? like in their breakout room chats, or are they gonna to have to come back and grab them? Um, I think they need to come back and grab them. So you might wanna go in there. Um, Sister Nazira, do you wanna start? At, I have an administration, middle and high school, elementary, and then preschool. I'll go into the administration one first, and then I'll okay. come back out. Okay. So we have to go give the link to each room. Do you wanna put it in Masma, Masma, grab the link, grab the link from the chat just in case, and then, and then okay. you can give it to the group if you need Got it. it. Mm -hmm. So now how do I visit her? Um, can you put me in a room, Sister Tina? Yeah, which um, grade level does it matter? It doesn't matter. Anything. Okay, preschool, I'm sending you. Hi, can you put me in primary, please? Yes. I don't have the option to join. On, I'm on a tablet. Yes, no problem, no problem. Sorry, Welcome as well. Yeah, I think I ended up sticking you in um, elementary. So let me just move you. I'm going to move you to, um, you said primary? Yeah, what do you have? I have preschool, pre K, kindergarten, and then grades one through five. One then, through five. So that would oh, be one okay. to five then. Yeah, okay. So that's where I had put you. So let's see if I can. No, I, I was in a high school one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So I reassigned you just now. Okay. Okay, um, you. So try again. How's it going? Good. Um, Can I yeah. send you to uh, the gifted group? Um, I have a friend in there. She goes, I'm concerned about people's ability to do this activity. So do you mind just checking in on them? Yeah, yeah, I'll go in. Um, which which breakout room is that? Um, so it's, um, I have like ELL gifted and everything. So I'm gonna, I'll just reassign you real quick. Okay. Okay. And then she will click join breakout room at the bottom and then it should move you there. Uh, Sister Tina, uh, can I go for a few minutes and come back? Yep. Thank you, Zach. To do share outs and so you guys should have picked one person who will be the you know representative for your group and then what we would like to ask you to do is um sister tina perhaps you can like um call them out one by one 
to do a share out of the last slide that you guys worked on and you have each each group will have 60 seconds and so i'll be the time to timekeeper to make sure that we don't go over 60 seconds just um so that we can respect everyone's time inshallah inshallah and i think um if you guys um are able to share your screen and then able to share your your slides so i think i gave permissions um those who know me know that i sometimes forget to give permission so inshallah you all have permission um to to screen share your slides so we're going to start with group number one which um, is going to be our preschool, pre-K and kinder group. Um, so inshallah, um, somebody can go ahead and share their screen and um, give their, I call it like a little elevator speech. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim So this is Tahira Rashid from Vancouver. I was part of the preschool kindergarten group. And so for the first question, I think your eyes can skim faster than I can talk because I have 60 seconds. So uh, what we highlighted here was that um, as a Muslim, we are able to grow and learn as an educator when we teach. Uh, we're making an impact on each student. And uh, the biggest other thing was when we don't know, it's, an hum it's a humbling experience. We don't know when something we don't know. So we're going to go and find out and provide answers for the children. So uh, that was for question one. Number two was the description of an experience that made us um, conflicted. So American holiday beliefs, we gave examples of, um, for example, Halloween and uh, Thanksgiving that have nothing to do with uh, being thankful, uh, the, the roots of it. So that's very conflicting when we have to deliver that to the children. And when we're surrounded by Western culture within our own environment as Muslims. So when we see our Muslim brothers and sisters uh, celebrate Christmas or um, Thanksgiving, it, it, that's also very con conflicting for us. And the third answer here uh, for question number three is when we're given the keys to administration, a very powerful uh, answer we got was that uh, to involve parents in uh, the role of education of a child. And it's not just about marking and grading, but rather it's about building the self-esteem and taking each child as an individual and not seeing them as somebody who just has to get A's and every child has been created different with different strengths. Uh, so that led to more communication between parent and parents and teachers. And as uh, parents see that the teachers are trying to do a, a positive, um, a, a, a put a positive impact on the children, the, um, the, the parents are more uh, trusting. And this is how a positive environment is built. And then to have an interconnected curriculum that's holistic. So everything revolves a lot around Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's biology or geography or math or language, all uh, knowledge comes from one source and that's Allah. And so integrating it is the best way to teach. Thank Masha you so Allah. much, everyone. Thank you so much, Sister Tahira. I'm gonna um I'm gonna ask you to really quick to show your slide yes. your your question number three, um, the visual you guys have created. So um we we didn't get time to do that, but we talked about one of uh, uh, the crafts that we could do to introduce the twelfth Imam, Imam al Huja as the sun behind the clouds. And if it can give me two minutes just to explain it. So when you're introducing this uh, idea to a child that Imam is the sun behind the clouds, what does it really mean? Like, what does it mean to a child when they're learning sciences? So the idea is that even when the sun is behind the, behind the clouds, the water is still evaporating. As the water is evaporating and water is coming up, these are our du'as that go for the Imam and for our fellow brothers and sisters. They, they go up and stack into the clouds and then the angels come and pull uh, or push the, the clouds to the area where it needs to go. And this is where our du'as are going to be deposited. And then with the will of the 12th Imam, the, du'a, the, du'a, the du'as and uh, the effect of our du'as gets deposited as rain. So the two different colors of raindrops means the Imam's prayers for us and our prayers for him. But if there was no sun, all this would not happen. MashaAllah, sister. <laughs> you are definitely... Um... An amazing early childhood educator. I can tell just from that beautiful visual that you pulled out. May Allah bless you. Um, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Need your du'as. Thank you. Thank you. May Allah bless you. Thank that was you beautiful. So much. And again, mashallah, like the talent exists in the community. You guys are all, you know, it's such an honor to be here amongst you all. Okay, great. Next group. All right. So our next group is our grade one through grade five group. I think that was room number six. So whoever um, is in charge can share their screen and their slide. 
and then go ahead and inshallah get started. Okay, maybe a great breakout room five. Okay, so something I will um, share. Uh, are you seeing my screen? Yes. We're seeing your screen, sister. Um, we are, I think it is breaking up as far as voice goes a little bit. So um, just in, in case, I don't know if there's something you can do about that or not. Yeah. But if, if you keep your camera off, it actually might help. Okay. okay. Unfortunately, we... That's fine. I will shut my camera Sister Tina, would it make it easier if we just shared the screen and just move to each slide as the breakout room shares? Or hmm. inshallah we can do that. Um I have I do have the breakout rooms up here. Should should I then I can just stop it then? Yeah. Yeah, inshallah I can I can go ahead and get that up for you. Okay. Okay. And then so, in the interest of time, I'm sorry, Sister Tina, can we um, present the, the third one? Okay. Yeah, I think this is the third one. Perfect. Yeah, we didn't have, uh, we certainly didn't have uh, everybody's voice on here, but uh, you can see we had a few kind of um, general themes coming up in uh, uh, Muslim representation, uh, allowing teachers more collaboration. I'm and again, uh, textbooks with less bias. Um, yeah, and we didn't, like I said, we didn't, we didn't really get to this last one. So, yeah. All right. Yes, some of the some of the conflicts though were actually very interesting for us as a group to listen to. Especially, uh, some of us were working in Islamic schools. Some of us were working in public schools. And some of us uh, were homeschoolers, so uh, there was uh, some great discussions there about some of the conflicts that we face. Uh, where, um, for example, where we're, we're actually experiencing some uh, difficulties within our own communities on uh, how they view us as teachers, and people requesting to be moved out of just based on assumptions on skin color or whether we speak the language that within our own communities. And then of course, in the larger communities, um, uh, having representation, having, um, uh, there's a push for equity, but are all types of equity aligned with uh, what we believe in as Muslims. So those were some of the interesting uh, conversations that we have. I don't want to take too much time. I think I dropped into this room and um, one thing that I don't know if so, I'm sorry if I'm mixing up groups, but was this the room that I also think brought up the influence of the LGBT community, I think was discussed in here too, um, which I thought was really interesting as a challenge because I think we a lot of the people were speaking about the influence of the different concepts in West that that contradict with Islamic beliefs, correct? Was this the group? Uh, yeah. yeah, we would. I think the comment came up um, as part of there's a big push in equity right now. And it's great because they are looking at things that Islamophobia, but equity is all lumped into one and all those issues are all lumped together. So when all those issues are being elevated as one voice, it creates conflicts. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, really great point. Inshallah, um, looking forward to collaborating with all of you, inshallah, in the future. So many bright ideas and amazing um, experiences for us all to share. Um, shall we move on to the next group? Yes. So, inshallah, this is our uh, middle and high school group. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share what we came up with. So, um, after our conversations, our end, um, I guess, point was that. Uh, regardless of being in a public or private school um, or Islamic, non-Islamic school, having that true Islamic holistic approach. And that might mean something in regards to um, having a training or workshop available for all Muslim teachers in terms of how to approach issues um, like dealing with LGBTQ or students who are um, teaching students who are. And so you being a Muslim teacher 
where is your limit? We had one teacher in our group who said, uh, Sister Zainab, who was mentioning how she's had multiple students who fall into those categories. So as she as a teacher, where does she stand and what, what kind of limits is she able to, um, or what kind of line does she cross and where do you cross it as an educator? Um, so a training or some sort of guidebook that's provided to Muslim teachers on how do you approach these situations. Um, and then the second thing to kind of fall in regards to the um, holistic approach was looking at, for example, Noah's Ark and taking more, um, you know, bringing maybe looking more at the social emotional part of the um, of the learning. And um, for example, uh, that could be like uh, having counselors who are available, even if like the question was, if you were an administrator, if you had the keys, what could you do? So if I were an administrator in a public school, maybe having multiple counselors on board. Um, and as a parent, I'd be able to choose uh, where I want my child or who I want look talking to my child. Does that counselor have, is, is, are they more in line with the Islamic values and beliefs um, that I want my child to be you know, exposed to and talked about? And then if you're, for example, in an Islamic school, I think it's definitely a setback where we do not have um, licensed counselors with Islamic perspectives, um, definitely something that could be, that would be a plus um, and is actually very necessary. Um, having counselors on board as a requirement um, to function as a proper Islamic school. And then obviously being able to, you know, the Mizan, one of the brothers uh, brought up in our group, using that as kind of our um, guiding point. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much to that entire group and Sister Madiha as the rep. All right, next group. All right. So I think this is where's our administrator group. Pressures on administrators. <laughs> <laughs> Assalamualaikum everyone. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Um, in our group, we actually kind of flipped the model. We decided, well, um, curriculum, when we look at curriculum, curriculum is both informal and formal, right? It's not just the projects, the tests, the lesson plans. It's really the teachers that are the curriculum. So we said, if the teachers are the curriculum, they, they are the center of all of the education then we, they also have to be spiritually, physically, emotionally, socially um, uplifted, not just the students, which I thought was really interesting. And so for those of you who, under, who know the Maslow's hierarchy and the Bloom's taxonomy, which is a hierarchy of thinking skills that goes from the basic to the higher order thinking skills, we realize they have to, um, both teachers and students have to um, fill the, social, the physical needs that are um, kind of depicted in the Maslow hierarchy you see here. Um, food, sleep, nutrition, you know, all of that. They have to have a sense of community and the belonging. And then they have to actually believe in the curriculum. A lot of times as educators, we're given the curriculum. We don't really believe in what we're teaching. Um, and if we're not believing in the curriculum, neither are the students, because we are the curriculum, right? So kind of goes both ways. So we realize that if, if we really want education, if we want to change education, we got to change the way we view the child and as well as the teacher. Um, so I, I, we really like these two images and they kind of really spoke. And then the slogan Maslow before Bloom is something I, I, I didn't coin it. It's, it's a common slogan that a lot of educators have been using the past couple of years. So we really felt like that spoke to our um, ideology of fulfilling the teacher's cup before we fulfill the, the student's cup. Amazing. Mashallah. Thank you so much. And this is actually, you brought up an amazing point because when Molana earlier had talked about like the four areas where we can develop, we talked about curriculum, curriculum resources, projects. And then one of them was seeing the teacher as the curriculum, you know, the vehicle for the curriculum. So yeah, that's amazing. Great. Okay. One last group. Here we go. Okay. So this is our um, special education gifted and uh, English language learners group. Assalamu alaikum. So I think the biggest message or biggest takeaway that our group really had was um, really teaching students how to think for themselves, how to make decisions, how to do the research, to, to really build that critical thinking, especially in today's day and age. And so as we were discussing it, a lot of things came up. Um, I don't know if any of you have uh, watched the TED Talk, The Dangers of a Single Story. If you haven't, it is really a great one and definitely something that we should consider um, as we integrate things into our curriculum, whether it's through books, uh, media, or other means. We talked about um, the other phrase too is books are windows, they're doors, they're mirrors. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to make sure that every student 
regardless of whether you're teaching Muslims or you're teaching the general population, every student should be able to see themselves in the things that we're teaching, but they should also be able to see other cultures. They should be able to see other religions, other ways of life. They should have those windows and those doors to be able to engage um, because once they see that and then give them the tools to research the information, is the information given to them accurate? Because this is what's going to teach our kids to make those good decisions, to realize that maybe not everything that's presented to them is, is accurate and is true. Um, a really good website I do want to point out, if you look at the bottom right here, socialjusticebooks.org is a really great resource. If you want to check, either look for a book or check to see if a book that you're reading is actually accurate towards whatever group you're discussing. It'll give you a green, yellow, or red light to kind of let you know uh, the book. You won't find every book on there, but it is does have a wide variety of books to look into. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, Sister Zahra, um, and to your entire group as well. Um, with that, we will go ahead and inshallah start our wrap up. Um, and Sister Tina, as we're getting that slide up, I just wanted to thank each and every one of you um, for your time, for your efforts, for, um, you know, your ideas, for sharing your knowledge, and for wanting to connect, inshallah. So um, we do have one slide, Sister Tina, for the wrap up, I believe, if you look at the main. getting there, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna need that slide to pump my memory. <laughs> yes, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, just to summarize, uh, Alhamdulillah, I think like the big takeaways for us are that we as Muslims really need to, uh, as Moana had beautifully kind of highlighted for us, we need to reclaim our narrative we need to reclaim our story. We need to um, do it. And if we don't do it, no one's gonna do it for us. Inshallah, you know, we'll, we can be producers and not only just consumers of whatever is already out there. And uh, in the future sessions, inshallah, we're gonna be taking a deeper look at the curriculum um, and specifically for our next session, which is in about a month. Um, I don't know the exact date, Sister Tina or Masma can jump in with that for sure. Uh, we're going to be having a keynote address by um, Brother Noman Zaidi, who is actually the principal of Rise Online. And we're going to be looking specifically at English language arts, because as those, you know, as all of you know, English language arts is a huge vehicle for um, pushing forward narratives and pushing forward, you know, social um, and cultural uh, norms and so on. And we're going to take a really deep dive into that specific one. And again, I apologize for today's session. It was a bit longer and it was introductory. So it kind of needed to be that way. But for the future ones, they're going to be very focused. So I encourage you all to come back for that language arts deep dive and also to reach out to your personal contacts, um, especially if you have, you know, friends who are, um, you know, ELA teachers or, you know, um, are, you know, teaching in elementary school where we're doing a bulk of like that ELA work. And finally, just uh, to uh, give the date in Sister Nazira, it's inshallah February 6th, 2021. Um, February 6th, if everyone can mark your calendars for that one. Um, and I, you know, like a lot of the times it's not just textbooks, but a lot of English language arts material that ends up dictating a lot of these um, agendas. So it'll be a really interesting one. Sorry, just wanted to. Inshallah, no, no problem, Sister Masama. Um, and we also wanted to let you all know that, you know, we encourage you on top of, you know, of course, joining us for our future sessions to also please connect with us. Um, there is going to be some opportunities. Um, you know, we want to hopefully not only, you know, talk the talk, but like walk the walk. And so we're talking a lot about the need for collaboration, the need for producing our own materials, the need for doing all these things. But not only do we want to talk about it, we really want to do it. So we invite you all to really join us, inshallah. Um, if you'd like to be part of the core team um, to volunteer, um, there's gonna be, inshallah, some opportunities that open up hopefully through this TMTC effort. And we would absolutely love for you all to join whoever is interested, however you can contribute as you know, thought leaders as we you know, embark on this mission, inshallah. Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and go to our exit ticket 
which is essentially, Sister Tina is gonna go ahead and put the link in the chat. We have a three, two, one for you all. Um, we ask you guys to share with us, um, you know, three things that you've learned from today. The second question is two things that you still have some questions about. And the last one is um, what's something that you plan on implementing immediately. And to give you guys some incentive for the <laughs> exit ticket, actually, we're going to be having a raffle prize for, um, you know, for those of you who complete the exit ticket. And it's going to be a surprise, actually. It's going to be, you know, we don't know, might be some Elkisa swag. It might be some, <laughs> uh, a, you know, gift card to some of our, you know, awesome Kiss a Kids book. You know, you'll find out, inshallah. So it, we encourage you to please go ahead and click on that link. Um, go ahead and fill out that information and um, be in touch with us. And with that, I'll ask Sister Masuma to go ahead and say a few words and we'll invite our beloved Moana to help close out with the dua. Thank you, Sister Nazira. And um, I, I wanted to just thank all of you so much um, today because it was so unique and special, especially when I was going into these breakout rooms to hear your voices and to hear your ideas. I was like, wow, mashallah, we have so much talent within the community. Um, it was so exciting to just like hear you guys speak. I was like, I wish we had more time for this, inshallah. Um, I, I don't want to take up too much time. I did want to just share this one quote before we end. Um, I know a lot of you are familiar with Howard Zinn. And I, ju I just thought it's so relevant to our, our topic today. He's written a book called A People's History of the United States. And it says, but there's no such thing as a pure fact, innocence of interpretation behind every fact presented to the world by a teacher a writer, anyone is a judgment. The judgment that has been made is that this fact is more important and that other facts omitted are not important. And it just goes back to our whole topic of curriculum gatekeeping. What do we present? What do we not present? And, you know, ha having the opportunity to teach children is such an amana, then whatever we present or don't present will really matter in the future. Um, so I just thought it was, um, a quote that we can keep in mind as we end. With that said, Milana, if you can please go ahead with your closing remarks, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you, Zakillah, for this beautiful session. And I truly I believe that, inshallah, once you start something with your sincere effort, you can, inshallah, achieve a great result. And what you could it, uh, you know, that's eye opening. And I'm sure that most of you are dealing with this reality every single day when you are dealing with your students. But it's good to bring that reality and put together our talent and effort, inshallah, to see a better result by optimization of our great effort. Uh, I would like to thank again all the uh, uh, you know uh, participants and sisters, brothers, those who attended, and especially a great teachers. Alhamdulillah. I think uh, the when I was uh, you know, watching to the uh, great talent in a couple of uh, minutes, you can create uh, is amazing. Sister uh, Tahira Rashid, who presented a beautiful, uh, you know, presentation uh, for the little uh, angels. Uh, uh, that could be a good inshallah for our even projects. Uh, I think Sister Savika, Sister uh, Masuma, you can consider that for uh, our uh, projects, future projects, inshallah. That's uh, amazing. Uh, you know, uh, see that talent. And this talent is something, uh, if we can put together, we can see a great result. Uh, Sister Masuma, when you are telling uh, uh, one point, I think one of the uh, sister texted me that, uh, wow, Molana, they succeed in their goal and agenda. I said, what is that? She said that Sister Masuma, she said, LGBTQ community. It means they able to create a community and they succeed in their uh, mission when they started two decades back from you know uh, scratch. So uh, even <laughs> we are kind of uh, acknowledging that. So it, it, it's a, a, you know the, the, uh, you know very important to understand the uh, team uh, effort and teamwork and to see how we can uh, you know achieve our future goals. So um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you know when we uh, uh, you know see a end result, we can inshallah have a great point. And Sister uh, Nazira, she mentioned about uh, surprise. I think that that surprise could be a ticket to inshallah SpaceX, right? Uh, 
Yeah, Moana, inshallah, is going to be um, personally funding that, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Sister Tina, she'll go to add some of the, uh, you know, uh, great uh, uh, things to it, inshallah. See, who knows? Alhamdulillah. But in, uh, the one of the things I would like to mention here, you as a teachers, uh, and also admin, and also what are the capacity you are serving for the uh, educational field, Sister Masuma, uh, she's here, alhamdulillah, a great, uh, uh, you know, source for all of us. Truly, uh, I believe that, mashallah, her presence is uh, amazing, like Sister Nazira, Sister, uh, you know, the, the, uh, Tina, and, uh, you know, all the other sisters, mashallah. Uh, the, uh, we have a, a project going on, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, donating the books to the public libraries. In this, uh, you know, with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Kisa books, Alhamdulillah, we saw that hundreds of libraries that are using our books and displaying our books. That's a great point. Uh, I would like to humbly request that any teacher or admin or principal or anyone knows or they think that whether you're teaching in public school or private school or Islamic schools or any uh, institution, if you need that, please reach out to Sister Masuma and she's going to inshallah uh, coordinate that and we can uh, send that as a uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the resources uh, to uh, their own libraries. Uh, I mean, maybe lots of, I know that like a few libraries which I was dealing with in the, the public schools, they accepted the books and you can also reach out to them. And this is also going to be a good, inshallah, uh, step to have a better result. In general, brothers and sisters, I would like to humbly request to all of you that think and plan today so inshallah we can pick the fruit and our children can enjoy that and we don't need to be subject for lots of discrimination fear hate or so on and so forth and rather we need to be an ambassador and you need, we need to be a pioneer in this great field and we can achieve all of that. And I want to see a day on which we, as a Muslims, can present holistic development for the curriculum and narratives. And we can, inshallah, contribute something, not only for our own children. I believe that we have an equal responsibility and liabilities towards all the children, towards all the human mankind and humanity. And we can, inshallah, serve that once we have a bigger, uh, greater goals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Jazakumullah. Taqabbalullah inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum salam. Thank you so much, everyone. Khudafis. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Please don't forget to fill out the exit ticket, please. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.